So the medical literature has gone back and forth on vitamin D supplementation. Some authors have suggested that it's a panacea or cure-all. Some recent papers and authors have suggested that it's effectively useless. My name is Robert Ficari. I am a uh, assistant professor of medicine at the Mall Cornell Medicine. I'm here to talk to you today about my paper in the, in the upcoming April issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, which is called Vitamin D Supplementation to D or Not to D. So my paper is really talking to clinicians intended to sort of reconcile the discordant opinions and, and go through the literature and, and try to you know, explain why there's been you know, different perceptions about vitamin D. You know, my article is, is largely you know, in response to a recent paper um, from last year uh, where um, there was a study of vitamin D and they took patients, um, randomized them to vitamin D or placebo, and they out, you know assessed different outcomes, one of which was fractures. Um, and so they found no change in in, in they, they found no change in fracture risk overall. And, and sort of the conclusion was that vitamin D didn't have any benefits. Uh, the flaw was that you know these patients actually started with a relatively normal vitamin D level. So uh, taking patients with a normal vitamin D and, and giving them more vitamin D, unsurprisingly, didn't have much benefits. Uh, this doesn't mean that no patients should be taking vitamin D. There's clearly patients who are deficient that do benefit from vitamin D. And if you, clearly, if you look at this paper's, you know, at some of the uh, subgroups of this paper who had osteoporosis, they actually did show a reduced risk of fracture. And if you look at previous literature of patients with vitamin D deficiency, they did show a reduced risk of fracture. So it's not an appropriate conclusion to take a study where patients had a normal vitamin D and, um, and were given a supplement and, and conclude that nobody needs a vitamin D supplement. It's just a flawed logic. There clearly are some patients that benefit from vitamin D. The challenge has been trying to identify those patients. So I think this paper is relevant to clinical practice because it's going to help guide clinicians uh, to counsel their patients on vitamin D supplementation and laboratory testing and try to guide them on, on how to make decisions um, you know, to supplement and or to check, um, check levels of vitamin D. There's some patients that need a supplement and some do not. There's some patients that uh, would benefit from checking a level, and in others, it's unnecessary. So my paper is intended to, to help guide clinicians on, on trying to uh, try to make these decisions. For patients, you know, they really should be speaking to their doctors about vitamin D. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, some people do need vitamin D and some don't. So it, it really is an individualized uh, decision, and, and patients should be discussing with their doctors on what's best for them. As far as future research goes, I think there needs to be, you know, more work done on trying to figure out, you know, which patients benefit from vitamin D and how much supplement is needed. Future studies should take into account the baseline vitamin D status of their subjects um, because that really has an important impact on the outcomes and, and can affect the validity of the, um, you know, the results. So I'd like to invite everyone to, to read my paper in the upcoming April issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Uh, for anyone that's interested in vitamin D, which, you know, should be, um, you know, most uh, primary care physicians, this is an important subject for, um, for most primary care doctors in prevention, prevention of fractures, prevention of infections, uh, prevention of autoimmune diseases, and, and, and the details of which are, are further explained in, in the paper. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.